Hey everyone, this is Ricky Bell with Victaulic VDC. I'm a programmer for Victaulic Tools for Revit. So I want to talk today about an automation tool that we've created to assist in creating assemblies. Uh, the tool is called AutoAssembly, uh, and in conjunction with two other tools, Combine Assembly and Split Assembly, it's an extremely fast way to split up your drawing into assembly spools uh, that can then be detailed later with the assembly manager. So this tool can be used two different ways. You can either make your selection and then run the tool, or if you have nothing in your selection and you run the tool, it will use every piece available within your view. But first, I'm going to open our spooling view so we can get started. So our spooling view, like I mentioned in other videos, is a 3D representation of your piping system that will show you whether or not an item has been added to a spool. Uh, if we were to use the auto assembly tool as a selection based tool, you could do something to this effect. Just grab everything on the left hand side and click on auto assembly. All right, now under here, this should look pretty familiar to anybody that's used our create assembly tools. Uh, this is a formula that you can use that will, um, in this situation, it'll take the system abbreviation and follow it up with a dash before it starts numbering things. I'm going to start at number one. So let's take a look at the auto spooling options at the bottom. Auto calculating field material is important. These are the joints that are going to be between your spools. They should be marked as field material. Set schedule assembly name. This is crucial with making sure that your spools don't become typicals. Like Revit likes to group like assemblies together and as you're going from system to system, that could be not what you're looking for at all. And here at the bottom, these are the ones that really make a difference here. Uh, the maximum pipe length for a spool, this will include the length of any fittings on the end. I'm gonna have set at 21 feet. That means if there's any pieces of pipe with the combination of fittings that falls above 21 feet, those will not get assigned to an assembly and they will remain white. So there's a visual indicator that it broke the rules of the auto assembly. Now the maximum bends at the bottom, this is the number of elbows that you'd want in your spool. So typically you'd probably want this to be at one so you have very linear spool drawings. But uh, if you wanted larger selections, you could set this up to two or three and uh, see how it changes the way auto assembly works. So now if I click OK here, auto spool is going to take over using the connectivity within Revit along with the auto spooling options here. And it's going to create multiple assemblies for me all at once. So now you can see 17 items were created, 17 spools were created that are now visible within the assembly manager. Uh, I can go to town and start uh, uh, spooling and detailing right from here. It's important to note even over here in the assembly manager, the numbering of the assemblies that were created has a little bit of logic that goes with it as well. I gave it a starting number of one and you see it started with chilled water return. It went all the way up to, oh, let's see, number 13 there before it found the supply line. And when the supply line came in, it started back over at number one. So that's your best bet. You start at a low number with the auto assembly. It's going to use that as a starting number for each iteration of different prefixes. So in my case, the prefix was a um, system abbreviation. In your case, it could be the level plus the system abbreviation, whatever you really select as a prefix. But these numbers will start back over at one. So let's head back over to our spooling view and take a look at the decisions that AutoAssembly has made. Now maybe we want to make some tweaks to these. There's two more tools within the Victaulic Tools ribbon that can assist in this as well. So up here under Create Assembly, you'll see AutoAssembly of course, and then these new buttons Combine Assembly and Split Assembly. I have them set to CAS and SAS as shortcuts. You can assign them to whatever you want. Uh, but it makes it a whole lot faster when you're trying to correct some of these assembly decisions. So let's say these end pieces right here, we decided that these can be one assembly themselves. Uh, combine assembly is the perfect tool for that. Basically you select more than one assembly. I'm going to do CAS and you can see the assemblies listed here, 10 and 11. I'm going to select the one that I want it to become. So CHWR11 is going to disappear and CHWR10 is going to become all of these Anytime that you're removing an assembly from Revit, you will see the last instance of an assembly. It's just a warning message, nothing to worry about. And now you see that all of this became one assembly. I can do the same thing over here. Select more than one assembly, CAS. I'm gonna make that one number one. 
I get the warning message that it's the last instance of an assembly, no big deal. And now we have some solid assemblies here at the end. Now one of the lesser known features of the assembly manager is the fact that you can rename spools and it will cascade the names down if there's any conflicts. It will also cascade the names up if there's any conflicts. So in this last instance, we got rid of CHWS2. So now it goes from one to three to four. If I wanted to correct that, what I would do is I would go to number four and rename it to three. And that's going to conflict with the one above it, which will force it to rename to number two. So let's, let's take a look. It says, are you sure you want to rename four to three? Sure. And then it says, hey, by the way, there's going to be two assemblies that get renamed because of this. And by clicking yes here, now my assemblies are back in order. One, two, and three. And we can do the same for the other side, which if you remember was 10, 11, 12, and 13, but 11 is now missing. So let's rename 13 to 12. Two assemblies are gonna get renamed because of it. And now 10, 11, 12, there's no more gaps in the assembly names for our spools. But what if we have an assembly that we need to split into two? Let's take a look at this one right here. This is CHWR number three. If I wanted to split this into multiple assemblies, I can just click it once. I have it set as SAS on my keyboard to split assembly. You can also go to the Victolic Tools ribbon and just click the button. What it does is it isolates the material and then asks you which items you'd like to separate from the original assembly. So I'm gonna grab everything up here, right there, click finish. Now it's asking me what I'd like to name it. Now this is the original name. I can't choose this, so it gives you a little warning message if you try to. So I'm gonna to go to the next one in line, CHWR number four. But CHWR number four, if you look in the assembly manager, is already there. So I'll click OK. And now it's warning me, telling me that there's gonna be a conflict. If I keep going, I'll click yes. It counts up the number of assemblies that will be affected. In this case, 10 assemblies will get renamed. I'll click yes. And then Victolic Tools takes care of the rest for you. It's gonna rename all the assemblies that were a conflict. Uh, of course, split the assembly into two. So now this one should be three, this one is four, and then down the line, these all cascaded to different numbers. Okay, now we can go across and do the same thing over here. I'll just hit SAS on my keyboard. I'll make a selection off of there and say these are the ones that I want to be a part of a different assembly. CHWR1, I'm going to rename it to 2, and it's going to rename everything else on its way back down. 13 assemblies are getting renamed. And now our assemblies are a lot closer to what we're looking for. So the auto assembly tool could easily be used on estimation drawings if you'd like to see how many spools you think this project would be or how many field material pieces you can expect on this project. But in combination with the combine assembly and split assembly tools, this could be used for an active BIM project and all the way out through fabrication. Thanks for watching.